Okay, welcome to the rest of the news. My name is Frank Simon. Our special guests today are Dan Bossman from South Africa, who's an evangelist, and Ed Holloway, who is a former state representative. Ed, we want to begin with you, and why don't you just tell us about those two well, books you got yeah. there? There's a thing that I've been trying to get because there's the media, and these are the three areas that are controlled by the media, the education system, and government itself. All of these things are employed to keep us from knowing the truth about any number of things, because pushing the socialist agenda only works when you keep the children from knowing history or anything connected with Christianity and all of this, and they have to get rid of Christianity and Judaism. And all of these things that are a foundation of our freedom in order to put together this socialist state. So Dark Agenda was a book written by David Horowitz. David was a former Marxist in the 60s. He and several others were part of a thing over in India and he in, in England. People might remember the name of Christopher Hitchens. Christopher Hitchens was another one of the Marxists, and he eventually turned later called himself an atheist, but he was more in favor of the Christian religion. But the thing that bothered me more than anything else was a section he wrote about Obama. And understanding Obama and some of the programs that he initiated, uh -huh. you have to understand his background. Going back to the fact that he was raised by communists, spent his entire life on the radical left before he was a Senate raised in Illinois, and that launched his national career. And he was trained and employed by the network that created Saul Alinsky, the author of that book, Rules of Radicals. Hillary Clinton looked at him as a mentor. He wrote her final papers in her college degree about Saul Alinsky and the Rules of Radicals. So Alinsky and other knows came out of that group from the 60s, and they are the men now that have moved into the top slots. And one of the other things that I find is fascinating is another one by Mark Levine, and he's written a book called The Unfreedom of Press, about the media and what is done. And I remember some of my friends that were in the universities, professors and others that were from the old school. One of my dearest friends was a guy named Benjamin Franklin Bills, University of Chicago. And he said, Ed, the problem today is that there's not a single professor out there who's ever made a living at the subject he's teaching. And it comes back to the radicals in the 60s that said, we have to do several things, one of which all of our radical movements are not working, the sit-ins and all that, and we have to change our tactics, and we have to do it from the inside. So they decided that you change your master's degree after your bachelor's and go into something like journalism, into the media, and into the government, and into the courts become lawyers and become judges and take the radical programs with you and be able to articulate them in an environment that people accept. So this all goes back to that period, and it all comes forward. And Dark Agenda is an example of the war. And the main thing actively around the world is to create an atmosphere where Christianity has to be destroyed. It goes on and on and on. So all of these things are going on. But it has its roots there. And I'm an older person who thinks about education as it related to me when I was there. There's no similarity whatsoever between education today and education in the 50s and 60s. It all began to change. And when those people Absolutely. went into that environment. It's really amazing. It was about 1963 that they took prayer out of the public exactly. school. Not only prayer, but the Bible, the Ten Commandments, and creation science, and started teaching a new religion, which is the religion of humanism. Every religion that has any expression about God or Jesus, yes. anything, has been removed from the Capitol and all members of Congress and all the rest of it. It's been a slow, cancerous process, a drip at a time, and it's just really changed all that. They took out our religion and put in their religion of humanism and make us pay the bill, which is absurd. And here we are paying all this money into the government who's teaching our children to not believe in God. That's a major problem. And 
we got all these other things too. Shadow government, they're trying to push that through. It's quite a scandal, like they did in Russian collusion investigation of Donald Trump. Of course, they hate him because he's making America great. What has happened is the biggest growth in America for the last 25, 30 years has been government. It's the largest. It has more people at every level of government. Every one of its administration created all these different agencies. And one of the things that Trump does, and he's the biggest threat, and this is why he has to be eradicated and cut out of there one way or another, is that because of that, he is dismantling some of these agencies and removing those and putting them back out. And for example, exactly what happened with Obama's last few years, like the two years, but most of it the last year, there are 26 members of the media that transferred from the media into the administration. Into it's, Obama it's administration. Even including the State Department on down the line. So these are the people now that are running those agencies, and they are threatened by what everything that Trump, Trump says. does as President of the United States. Dan, I got a copy of that email that you sent out about Islam being kicked out of certain countries. And I tried to substantiate all that. Here it says, in China, the most brazen frontal assault on Muslim in modern history looks like taking Islam out of Japan. Up to a million Chinese citizens have been sent to concentration camps were unanimous in their anger when Trump administration moved the embassy. Oh, yeah, they didn't like him moving the embassy into Jerusalem. So that's one of the anti-Muslim developments here. Cuba rejects the first mosque. So Cuba doesn't want the Muslims taking over Cuba either. And here is Angola, 2016. They tried to get rid of the Muslims in Angola. Here is Norway. Now, this is an interesting one because the people in Norway tried to get rid of some of the people, the Muslims. The crime rate went way down when they got rid of the Muslims. I was trying to find that on the internet. Well, I found the article, but Google apparently had grayed it out so you could hardly read it. You couldn't copy the article at all. Can I read to you what the article said? Yes. It's really interesting. It said a record number of Muslims, over 2,000, have been deported from Norway as a way of fighting crime. Since these Muslim criminals have been deported, crime has dropped by a staggering 72%. Prison officials are reporting that nearly half of their jail cells are now vacant. Courtrooms nearly empty. Police now free to attend to other matters. Keep their roads and highways safe. Assisting the public in many ways. I think that is amazing. It was amazing to me to get an article on Google that had been grayed out, so it was very hard to read. Also, that they had fixed it so you couldn't copy that article because this is, like you say, very damaging. You always think of Google, oh, well, we'll get to the bottom. We'll look it up on Google. But really, Google is part of the problem, not the answer. And that's the same thing going on in England. All the protests against the president to visit was the fact that the only media from the United States they get is CNN. And one of the things, all this, which as you pointed out, about what's happening in other countries in relation to the Muslims, at the same time, we have brought in 75,000 refugees from Syria, an unknown number from other countries that are bringing in here. And Somalia, Jefferson County, now has thousands of them. Bowling Green, Kentucky, had some Muslim terrorists. I remember reading that. So all these things being hushed up. At the same time, other countries are taking the corrective measure against some of that. The number of rapes in place in England, other places, and in the United States at the same time, we are welcoming 
one Muslim after another, and at the same time excluding any Christians that attempt to come to the United States. What you say is absolutely true. And the other thing is our media here in the United States refuses to report on what's going on. So you turn on ABC, NBC, CNN, and CBS, and well, you get nothing but propaganda. Like Dan was saying earlier before the program began, these farm murders in South Africa, they're saying, oh, they're not happening. We got that video that you gave us. It shows the bodies, and we're getting some reports from South Africa about how they're confiscating the farms and killing the farmers. And it's a terrible thing going on. And the New York Times, in quoting that article you gave me, said, oh, well, those farmers deserve to be killed, be murdered. The same thing with Rhodesia. Do you know that I speak to people every second day that still live in what is now called Zimbabwe, and they have 90% unemployment. 90%. And cholera is rife. Raw sewage had been running in the streets. Pharmaceuticals are very difficult to obtain. It's even impossible nowadays to get a loaf of bread. In fact, Hannity reported on Fox News that Zimbabwe has now become the poorest country in the world. And it used to be one of the most wealthy. It it used to be the food basket of the world. Now it's the poorest country in the world. Mugabe chased the farmers off the lands. I've been shown photographs of where the bush is encroaching back onto the farms again. There's not a single person, not a single person is on those farms today. So why were they chased off the farm? There's only one reason. It is an ideological reason, a socialist reason, because not long ago, the Zimbabwe president had a meeting with Putin and All kinds of concessions were given to Russia. So Zimbabwe has now virtually become a Russian state. The next step from socialism is communism. And that's what they want to do. They want to do it here in America. They want to turn America into a communist country. The Democrat Party has become a socialist party in a lot of ways. They have removed the people who are traditional conservative and constitutional members of Congress and beaten at the polls. The money is being flowed into those other liberal left-wing socialists. And it's a frightening thing because, as he was pointing out, all these things have happened in those other countries. Those of us who grew up during the Cold War, we knew what was going on, the consequences, the suppression of the individual mass starvation, the labor camps, imprisonment of unauthorized groups, and all of those things, and then the atrocities that we witnessed during that period are not experienced by the younger generation. They don't know anything that happened like that. And modern acceptance of socialism is particularly distinct among the younger Americans. Right. 55% of respondents aged 17 to 29 in a 2006 Gallup poll said that they hold a positive view of socialism. In 2017, another poll asked the millennials whether they would prefer to live in a capitalist, socialistic, fascistic, or communist nation. And 44% answered socialism. And in 2018, another study among Americans aged 22 to 37, over a third of the respondents identified as socialists asked what they described their political leanings interest enough None of these polls defined socialism as they responded only when they approved of it or not. Do young, self-styled American socialists understand what socialism is? And they have not had any experience or knowledge of it, and they think it's a wonderful thing, and you could create this utopia. Socialism and communism is related. There's no difference in them at all. It's just labels. And if you remember the Communist Party of the United States was active in the 20s and 30s and even up into the 1940s, 
we were aligned with Russia against Hitler. At the same time, they did not know what some other things were going on. All these things have been going on, and nobody in the media, as you just pointed out, Google and the rest of them, do not put in the information, do not share them. At the same time, all these things are going on, and then the access to information is not available anywhere. And don't you think the public schools are indoctrinating children to think that socialism is a free lunch for everybody and all of that? They are pushing that. The enemies of our country, they're pushing it too. At the same time, health care, that's an entitlement. We are entitled. And a guaranteed free education. Abortion is another example. Margaret Stanger, who created Planned Parenthood and all that, was a type of extermination, killing, and the elimination of certain undesirable people. And then that's all been this. Now it's a wonderful thing, and everybody should have an excess abortion if you want. And even up to and including after the baby is born. If I don't like it, I don't like it. You know, is, then we could have it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. And this is where Christians have to take an active part of the political stance. They have been told for a long time that you can't involve Christianity in politics, but it's a question of survival. Can I say yes, something please. in this regard? The American Constitution was founded on biblical principle, and we as Christians have to embrace those biblical principles. So it's very important for Christians to be proactive. We cannot sit back and just think everything will turn out all right, because it won't. That's exactly right. That brings up the idea of what can we do about all of these things. And one thing is these DVDs about the birth, the miracles, the life, the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus is all on these videos, and we can send these out to people. I think that's a big part in opposing what the socialists want to impose on us. The number to call, 895-5025. We can send this out free, and on the back, it tells you how you can get enough in your church. And the number to call is 895-5025. And you can call the number right now, and we can get that out to you. The other thing we would like to do is get you a copy of the Jesus bumper sticker. Left hate the name of Jesus, and they get real upset when you see these Jesus bumper stickers. We would like to send you a free Jesus bumper sticker, too. If you call that same number, just put that on the answering machine. You've seen these around before. They're all over Louisville, and we need to get them all over Kentucky and all over America and all over the world. So just call that same number, 895-5025. The area code is 502 because we're talking about Louisville. But if you call right now, we'll get that. And, of course, they're free. The good news is that Ona Kralem and her husband, Nicholas, are coming to America during the month of July. They will be up from the 20th to the 23rd of July, first going to Las Vegas for another beauty pageant, and then going to Hollywood to make a Hollywood production of how the Boko Haram terrorists captured her husband. They had boarded the bus, and which they were traveling en route to the airport after the sports program in Nigeria. They shot some of the people on the bus. In fact, he's one sound technician. When he answered his phone, they just riddled his body with bullets. And then he was taken captive and taken into the bush for 10 days by these terrorists. They allowed him to call his wife because they thought they could extort some money from them, seeing that she was Mrs. Intercontinental. And his wife got their church to pray, and they 
had a prayer vigil for seven days, night and day, and through a miraculous intervention of God, Nick was released and was able to come back to South Africa. Wow. Now, that is an amazing story of what faith right. in God and prayer can do. We can pray. I think sometimes we spend too much time talking, too little time praying. They're going to be at the Meadow Hills Baptist Church on Manners Lane, Monday the 22nd of July. Of July. And everybody is welcome. Come and have a nice meal and come and listen to this amazing testimony. At the same time, Tom Kirk is going to give his testimony how he blacked out while on a flight to Louisville in Louisville Airport. He actually had blacked out because of the sealant that was used in the windscreen. And his wife, Della, God showed her a vision, a momentary vision of her husband blacked out. Was he the pilot? He's the pilot. He was blacked out and he was able to talk to the air traffic controller and land safely. Now, that is another example of what prayer can do. I really believe we've got to come to the place where we start to trust God once again and put our faith in God. That's what the early Americans did. They right. put their faith in God. And we've got to put our faith in God and trust God. So everybody is welcome on the 22nd of July at 12 noon at the Meadow Hills Baptist Church. Okay, what Church. day of the week is that? It's a Monday. A Monday, okay. Let me just say once more that we have these free Jesus DVD movies, and we have the free Jesus bumper stickers, and then we're going to pray too. ask God to save America. The number to call to get your free materials is 502-895-5025, and you can call right now. And if no one is there, just leave your message on the answering machine, your name and address and phone number. We are all out of time. God bless you, Dan Bosman and Ed Holloway, and God bless you for watching. We'll tune in again next week for the rest of the news. Hi, I'm Dr. Frank Simon. I'm an allergist and family doctor, board certified in both allergy and internal medicine. I specialize in allergy, headaches, sinus, hives, cough, asthma, hypertension, and diabetes. We're located at 1404 Browns Lane near Norton Suburban Hospital. Our phone number is 895-5088. We can see you tomorrow. Tell you a little bit about myself. Why am I the right person to run in November? First and foremost, I am a vet. Heather French Henry is going to run on veterans issues. She's done it since she's been Miss America. She's done it the entire time she's been there. We have to have a strong candidate to go in there and go toe to toe with her on every issue that she wants to go on. So she's going to sit there and she's going to say, well, we want to do this for veterans and we want to do that for veterans. And I can say in 2012, I set off the coast of Iran on a warship and I cast my ballot for Mitt Romney. Who do you think knows better what it is like to be able to vote as an active duty service member deployed downrange than somebody who's actually been there? So if she wants to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, let's go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And more importantly, English always beats French. For the past four years, I've basically run an office larger than the Secretary of State's office. I've been the general counsel for the Kentucky Justice and Public Safety Cabinet. I ran an office of over 40 lawyers, paralegals, and investigators dealing with legal issues for a cabinet of 8,000. I'm a lawyer. I have a master's degree in public policy. I have a master's degree in communications. I have actually worked in government. I know the nuances. I know how to get things done. At the end of the day, both these gentlemen here and Steve who's not here, they're all good. We all pretty much have the same views on how to get things done in Frankfurt. The ultimate question that you have to ask yourself is, one, who can beat Heather? I know I can beat Heather. I know I can go toe to toe. Then who can actually go in there and get it done? Who can work with the legislature? Who can work with the governor's office? Who can work with all the people that you have to work with to actually make things happen? I've been there. I've done that. I have a record proves that I can get these things done. I've gone and cleaned up DOCJT. I've gone and worked with Department of Corrections. I've gone and worked with the Kentucky State Police. That is what my job has been for the past three years. We've made great strides with the current administration. Governor Bevin is going to win. He is. He's going to win this primary. He's going to win re-election. 
Ryan is going to win re-election. Our other two candidates who have no opposition, Mike Harmon, who's doing an awesome job at the auditor's office, is going to win. Our auditor, Allison Ball, is going to win. We can sweep all of these offices. we got two great candidates for the Attorney General's office, Daniel Cameron and Will Schroeder. Whoever comes out of that primary is going to beat the tired candidate of Greg Stumble. And Mike is right. Mike said that Heather Prince Henry could be the new face of that party. She is not running to be the Secretary of State. So we have to stop her now. We have to stop her before she is running against Mitch McConnell in six years, or if he retires, whoever that seat's going to be. We have to stop her now before she's running for governor. This is our opportunity now before she's legitimized. I am the candidate that can beat her. I can take away her major issue. Then we can go back and talk about 48 counties in Kentucky that have more registered voters and citizens eligible to vote. We can talk about how we have no voter ID. We can talk about how this secretary of state is sitting on her laurels, not taking advantage of the now $20 billion of economic investment that's coming to the Commonwealth. Because that's the part of the office that doesn't get talked about in the secretary of state's race. You know, the legislators reached in and they took away the election power from that office because Allison has run that office so poorly. But we need a leader in there to rebuild the office, to start from the ground up, to build a team. That is what I do. That is what I'm good at. I'm not trying to be the expert in elections. I'm not trying to be the expert in this, the expert in that. I'm trying to build the team that will get the job done. I'm an expert in building teams. That's what my military background, six years active duty, currently lieutenant commander in the reserves. That's what my background running off. 40 attorneys, paralegal investigators has done. I was a college football player. That's what my dad has instilled in me since about this big. I'm a team leader and a team builder. I ask for your vote May 21st. Thank you all. This is Abby. She's our newest volunteer escort. Abby, this is Cheryl Alessandro. I'd be the youngest director in Planned Parenthood history. You'll actually be in charge of the abortions at your clinic? I have a chance to make a real difference. No matter what you do for the rest of your life, you're still going to be a baby killer. The only thing that's changed is you, Abby. Can you even hear yourself talk right now about these procedures? These are little babies. I'm not going to apologize for doing a job that helps women in crisis. There's still a part of me that isn't sure. I know. But the one thing that all experts agree on is that at this stage, the fetus can't feel anything. Sorry to bother you, but they need an extra person in the back room. I saw it. It was like it was twisting and fighting for its life. We commend the souls of these hundreds of children. And Lord, we pray to end abortion. I really appreciate what you've done for us. I'll not forget it. 22,000 abortions. How do I even comprehend that? Boo! What are you doing? It's your dad and me. You are our baby from the moment of conception. We are paying you to be a perfect instrument of corporate policy. We are an abortion provider. I can't be a part of this anymore. Everything that they told us is a lie. Don't underestimate the repercussions of this. You gotta be careful. Rhonda, please don't do this! Rhonda! Let me tell you what's gonna happen if you walk through that door. Congratulations. You've made an enemy of one of the most powerful organizations on the planet.